sending me links to the trailer for the new Noah movie where Russell Crowe and Emma Watson get together and a bunch of other people get together and they make this movie about Noah's Ark. And a lot of people want to know, hey, are you going to go see it? Yeah, I'm going to go see it. Actually, I think it might be kind of interesting to watch. I'm not offended by the movie. A lot of people are, you know, pissed off about this movie and they're super offended and I don't see any reason really to be offended by the movie itself because there are lots of fictional movies that I've enjoyed watching like- <laughs> and Spider-Man and all those other Superman superhero movies and stuff like that. get offended because they're interesting, they're just a story, they're a fairy tale, and I understand that. But the thing you can be irritated with uh, are going to be the reactions that people are surely going to have to the movie. I can already see it. All the people out there going, see, look, proof, we have proof now. It's evidence for the flood, for the great deluge of history. It's evidence. <laughs> And uh, that's going to be kind of frustrating, and I have seen the movie at different points being advertised as historical. So I kind of have an issue with that. 
Um, but as far as the movie itself goes, I don't think it's that annoying. Um, I do think the reactions that it's going to have are going to be annoying, so because of that, and since 40% of the American population decides to be biblical literalists, meaning they take everything in the Bible word for word seriously, they think that the flood happened, they think that the Garden of Eden happened, they think people rose from the dead, they think a man lived in a whale, and so on and so forth. <laughs> So since 40% of our population are delusional enough to feel like Noah's Ark is actually historical and that this movie might actually be evidence for it, it's worthwhile to go through and pick apart every part of that story and tell you why it's complete bullshit. So to everyone using this movie as proof, I now present you proof of Spider-Man, proof of magic, and proof of idiots. I'm sorry, I fucked that up. The last one actually was, was pretty legitimate proof of idiots. <laughs> And with that, let's begin our analysis of the physical implications of a literal interpretation of Noah's Ark. The Bible said that the floodwaters were enough to cover the mountains and Mount Everest and <laughs> roughly 29,000 feet, so that's a lot of water. Where did it come from? enough to give an answer to this question. They have the waters of the heavens and the waters of the deep divided by the firmament in the sky. Yep, that's right. They think Earth is a giant snow globe floating in water. <laughs>
And then we have to think about geographic distribution, which presents two issues. All the animals traveling from all around the world, conveniently in pairs of two and getting on the ark without fighting or anything bad happening. And then after the flood was over, traveling mass expanses of land back to their original habitats. <laughs> Why would all those marsupials, but no placentals at all, have migrated en masse from Mount Ararat to Australia? Which route did they take? Why did not a single member of their straggling caravan pause on the way and settle in India, perhaps, or China, or some haven along the Great Silk Road? Why did all the penguins undertake the long waddle south? to the Antarctic, not a single one to the equally hospitable Arctic. <laughs> Fast forward and pretend that everything happens perfectly. Nobody eats each other, everybody gets along, it's great. Well, God told Noah to prepare every kind of food that was to be eaten. Not to mention the water that they're gonna need and it's only raining 40 days, so you gotta figure that shit out too. Um, where the hell is he gonna get all this food? Two elephants need 365,000 pounds of food and 36,000 gallons of water. Giraffes need 54,750 pounds of food. Hippos need 65,700. Lions need 16,000 pounds of meat. Oh yeah, and I hope no one didn't forget to bring a freezer or else all that meat's gonna rot. <laughs>
kind of impossible to fit all the food on the ship, much less all the animals. Which includes 17,400 birds, 9,000 mammals, 12,000 reptiles, 5,000 amphibians, and 2 million insects. And many of those insects are obligate parasites, which is going to make the trip for all the other animals so much more fun, especially since a lot of them carry diseases. So let's just pretend that none of that shit matters, everything is just fine, nothing has killed us yet, we're all just living on the ark all happy. <laughs> because we rose to at least 29,000 feet to cover Mount Everest. So we're going to try to not freeze to death at this point. That's pretty damn high. At least the animals are going to have a difficult time breathing. <laughs> of sea life that are just going to die. First of all, the sunlight's not going to get deep enough in the water for the plants, so the fish and all the other aquatic life aren't going to have nutrients. Billions of dead things buried in rock waves laid down the water all over the earth. Billions of dead things buried in rock waves laid down the water all over the earth. Well, there really was a worldwide flood. Just look at the stony curse. With billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down the water all over the earth. They're gonna die. Salt water and fresh water are going to mix. Sorry if that's offensive to Islam, but in fact it does mix. So then all the fish are gonna die and all the different, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Everything's gonna fucking die. And even if none of that should happen, now we have to think about after the flood is over. The purpose of the flood was to kill all land life. Nothing is left. What are the animals going to eat when they get off the ship? I mean, they're going to have a pretty far journey to get back to their natural habitats. You know, like I said, the marsupials are going to have to travel all the way back to Australia. That's a pretty long way to go without anything to eat. What are the herbivores going to eat? All the trees, all the plants are dead. What are the carnivores going to eat? I mean, every time they eat an animal, they're going to make the entire species go extinct. <laughs>
Speaking of going extinct, the only way to prevent everything from going extinct is through lots and lots of incestual inbreeding. That's the only way to prevent it from happening. Like, you know, because there's nothing that could ever go wrong with that, like severe genetic defects, you know, because that's not a problem, right? God, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to save us? How are you gonna let that happen? I mean, he's gotta have some kind of plan, right? He's gotta have some kind of plan to prevent all those things that we just talked about from going terribly, terribly wrong. Well, I think he does, and it was explained perfectly in a Dark Matter video. Magic! Oh, okay. Uh, so getting the animals to the Ark? Magic. Uh, fitting the animals on the Ark? Magic. Uh, getting the animals to behave? Magic. The food? Magic. The water? Magic. The poop. Magic. The freezing cold. Magic. The lack of oxygen. Magic. Finding food after the flood. Magic. The genetic diversity. Magic. Magic. And as ridiculous as it sounds, a lot of people still actually believe this shit. They take it seriously, and that's so depressing. There's so many other flood myths out there, too. I can sit here and talk about that. This video could be forever long because there's so many different flood myths. There goes Christianity plagiarizing from other religions yet again. The Indians had a flood myth. The Babylonians, the Greeks, the Incans, the Chinese, almost everyone had a flood myth. So it's not surprising that the Hebrews also had a flood myth. Because it's a fairy tale for the millionth time. It's not real. This movie is not historical. you say these things, no matter how many times you give people all these different facts and present them with all the different things that makes the story so unlikely in so many different ways, they're still going to sit there and say, well, it's in the Bible. That's evidence. This movie is even going to give them further reason to say, hey, look, more evidence. And they're going to look at all the other different flood myths if they even know that other flood myths exist. <laughs> And they're gonna be like, well, all of these, all of these are fake. They're not real. Those are just myths. Those are just stupid fucking stories. Just ignore those. This one, though, this one, that one's real. And the fact that that's gonna happen is pretty damn sad, if you ask me. It's pathetic. The fact that 40% of Americans are biblical literalists is scary to me. Once again, I'm sorry to take a sledgehammer.
to so small and fragile and not. But the movie itself isn't bad. I mean, there's other fictional movies, like I said, out there. So the movie itself doesn't offend me. I'm not that kind of person. But the fact that they're advertising it as historical is way off. They shouldn't be doing that. And the reactions that people are going to have to it, I'm already annoyed and it hasn't even happened yet. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Are you going to go see this movie? Are you so excited to see it? Do you believe that Noah's Ark is a real story? Because I'd love to hear it if you did. Um, also, check out all my links in the description below. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.